Our work week is off and running on an absolutely gorgeous weather start. We'll show you how long the September like stuff sticks around. UK police say the man they caught stealing textbooks at this bookstore admitted to stealing and selling many more. What he told police. It's automatically on your criminal background. A Lexington woman's online petition is spreading fast why she's trying to change Kentucky law. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon to you. Fall in the forecast. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Amber Philpott. It is simply beautiful out there in Lexington right now. Showers and storms finally moved out, and so has all that humidity. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look now at your forecast. Yeah, we've advertised that September fill for a while now, Amber, and Mother Nature delivering the goods on Sunday, and that rolls on into at least the first couple of days of this week. If you're like me, you're stuck inside on a day like this, hey, we've got you covered anyway. We can can look outside with some of our live sky cams, kind of eating our hearts out and looking at these sky cams with plenty of sunshine, a little high cloud cover from time to time. Those fair weather cumulus clouds really not doing a whole lot. Uh, thermometers into the 70s across central and eastern Kentucky, 78 Lexington, 77 Danville, Somerset, and London. That Frankfurt thermometer running way too warm uh, nowadays. We look elsewhere across the region in terms of just trying to find something with rainfall. And for the first time in, uh, what, three, four, five weeks, we haven't been able to talk about anything across Kentucky. So that is certainly good news. As we look ahead, another nice night is ahead of us. We'll be back into the 50s. However, all good things must come to an end. It's just kind of a little break in the action. Steamy temperatures, scattered thunderstorms. Amber, I know you've heard that one before. They're back in the seven day forecast. And I'll show you when in a few minutes. All right, Chris, we'll see you in just a bit. Thank you. Police believe he is connected to textbook thefts at Kentucky universities across the state. And today, he answered to a Fayette County judge. University of Kentucky police arrested 30 year old Anthony Shields when they say he tried to sell a stolen textbook at a campus bookstore. Kristen Kennedy is tracking the investigation in our top story at four. UK police arrested Anthony Shields at this bookstore. Was working Saturday and Saturday morning, and lo and behold, the guy just walked in. Robert Dickinson says Anthony Shields tried to sell eight stolen textbooks Saturday. Dickinson recognized Shields immediately. Campus police had asked him to be on the lookout for the man. Investigators believe Shields has stolen textbooks from UK, Moorhead State, EKU, even Western Kentucky University. They're not sure just how many books, but they do believe he's been taking them and trying to sell them for a profit for a long time. He's behind bars for burglary and possession of burglary tools. He asked the judge during his video arraignment Monday afternoon to let him leave on his own recognizance, but the judge denied his request. Dickinson told us Shields had a very elaborate story for officers when they questioned him about the stolen books. He had worked for a book company and he was he had bought the books off professors and he was buying them back from students and then he was selling them for a profit, which wasn't true. Shields will be back in court September 1st. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. UK leaders say they swapped pictures and surveillance of Shields with other area universities to link him to multiple thefts. So far, he is only facing charges here in Lexington. Also in court today, a man accused of shooting his cousin multiple times Sunday in Lexington pled not guilty to charges. 26 year old Anthony Beard Jr. is charged with assault and burglary. Lexington police say Beard broke into the house on Jackson Street with a handgun, got into an argument with his 23 year old cousin, and then shot him once in both. Both legs and twice in one arm. He was arrested last night. Beard is scheduled to be back in court on Friday. New this afternoon, police in Western Kentucky say they have caught a man who walked away from a Lexington prison Sunday. Leaders there say 41 year old Lewis Stokes escaped around 8:15 a.m. from Blackburn Correctional Complex. He was serving a 37 year sentence out of Henderson County for receiving stolen property. Stokes would have been eligible for parole in April of 2018. The Hart County Sheriff's Office says one of their deputies and troopers found him. Say police are still trying to find two teenagers missing in Rowan County. Troopers say two girls walked away from Sunrise Residential Facility in Moorhead August 18th. 17-year-old Brianna Gregory, the girl on the left side of your screen, is from Kenton County. She was last seen wearing a blue shirt, gray pants, and a dark colored sweatshirt. Troopers believe she is with 15-year-old Layla Hood from Powell County. She was last seen wearing a pink sweatshirt and black leggings. 
We're working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick joins us now from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Hello, Sam. Good afternoon, Amber. Three people facing charges after deputies say they had to break up a massive underage drinking party twice this weekend. Deputies say nearly 300 teenagers were drinking alcohol at a party along Cripple Creek Road in Whitley County. They were called out to the home on Friday and then again on Saturday. Deputies say that one of the people charged was arrested twice. We're talking to the sheriff about what they're calling a barn burner coming up on WKYT News at 4.30. A Lexington woman is trying to change the way the state punishes convicted child abusers. Lauren Sizemore's niece, Kylie Jo, was injured while she was with her babysitter. Nicholasville police have charged the babysitter, 34-year-old Aaron Thompson, with criminal abuse back in April. She's pled not guilty. Two days ago, Sizemore launched an online petition to change Kentucky laws so that convicted child abusers would have to register just like sex offenders. That petition already has more than 1,000 signatures. It's automatically on your criminal background, and in order for you to figure out that information on a specific person, you have to print off a form online, you have to send it back in with $10. Thompson has not been convicted of child abuse. We will talk to Size more about what's next for the petition on WKYT News at 6 o'clock. A group of volunteers in Harrison County trying to fill up a semi truck with donations to send to four legged flood victims down in Louisiana. Helping hounds find homes in Cynthiana is collecting everything from hay bales to cat food to help animals affected by the flooding. More than 2,000 animals have been displaced by the flood waters. Coming up on WKYT News at 5, we'll tell you where you can drop off donations this week. That's a quick look at some of the news in progress on this Monday. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. President Obama says he plans to visit flood-ravaged Louisiana tomorrow. The disaster has killed at least 13 people and damaged some 60,000 homes. Manuel Bohorkas reports outside Baton Rouge where homes and history have been lost. Across southern Louisiana, roads are lined with debris as the scope from the catastrophic flooding becomes more clear each day. Master bedroom here. Water has destroyed most of Kathy Edmonston's home of nearly 30 years. Kathy, what have you lost here? Virtually everything. Virtually everything. The number of damaged homes jumped to more than 60,000 this weekend, and businesses are also feeling the brunt of this disaster. This has got to be so hard to see. This is uh, pretty much. Our, our building right here, what you're looking at. Elvin Watts' there, business, uh, like many others in the historic antiques district of Denham Springs, is in shambles. He says he's managed to clean up with little help. We're doing it ourselves. We don't have any FEMA, no government, no nothing. The historic flooding has forced more than 106,000 people to register for FEMA assistance, a one week total the agency hasn't seen since Superstorm Sandy. FEMA representatives tell us some places are still unreachable, but they say they are active in all 20 hard-hit parishes. We did have teams on the ground as the waters were rising, uh, and we have teams here all the way through. More than $36 million in federal assistance has already been approved for this area, but there are still more than 3,000 people living in shelters. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Denham Springs, Louisiana. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards is encouraging people to donate to organizations like the Red Cross. Ryan Lochte lost two sponsorship deals less than a day after the end of the Rio 2016 Games. Ralph Lauren and Speedo have dropped the U.S. Olympic swimmer. Lochte and three teammates said they had been robbed at gunpoint after attending a party at the Olympics in Brazil. But a few days later, it was discovered that the athletes vandalized a gas station. Speedo said in a statement, it cannot condone behavior that is counter to the values this brand has long stood for. Lochte has since apologized, saying he over-exaggerated the story. Coming up, summer is not over, but its expensive airfare tickets are about to be. We have details on some cheaper flights for you. And Gawker is going offline. What's going to happen to their employees next? Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family.
A popular blog website is signing off. That begins today's Money Watch. Gawker.com, the flagship site for Gawker Media, is officially shutting down today. Most staffers will be assigned to other editorial roles, either at one of Gawker Media's other six sites or at Spanish language broadcaster Univision, which bought the company. Company founder Nick Denton, though, will be out of a job. It's all part of a deal in which Univision bought Gawker for $135 million after it declared bankruptcy. Gawker Media was pushed into Chapter 11 after losing a lawsuit filed by wrestler Hulk Hogan. He sued Gawker for invasion of privacy and won. Drug giant Pfizer announced it's buying biotech company Medivation for about $14 billion. Medivation's portfolio includes the prostate cancer drug Extandy. Pfizer will pay a 21% premium over Friday's closing price to buy the company. The deal still requires shareholders and regulator approval. A charity created by Mark Zuckerberg is getting its first infusion of cash from the Facebook founder. He donated some of his Facebook shares to the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative back in December. The group has now sold those shares, making 95 million dollars. The charity's goal is to advance human potential and promote equality for all children in the next generation. Zuckerberg has promised to give the group one billion dollars worth of shares each year for the next three years. Self-driving vehicles could soon be hitting the pavement in Ohio. Testing on Ohio's toll road is set to begin within the next year. The state's highway department is working on creating another testing area along a divided highway near Columbus. Ohio is one of a handful of states starting to test and research self-driving vehicles. If you are looking to book your next trip, tomorrow could be just the day to do it. August 23rd is considered cheap flight day. Summer's more expensive fares will start to fall as demand goes down. Experts say ticket prices could drop by, by about 10 to 20 percent. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about at Masterson Station Park today preparing for the third annual Moon Tower Music Festival. We'll hear from the Blind Core Liquor Pickers when we return here on WKYT. What a great day to be outside doing a little picking and grinning, huh? Beautiful skies across the bluegrass state. And up next, I'll show you how long this dry radar picture will stick around. You stick around. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hey, beautiful weather out there kind of goes without saying, huh? After the first half of the weekend was just ugly, rainy, Sunday bringing the better weather, and that rolls on into today. Look outside and look at that view here in Lexington. You got a little cloud cover dancing with the sun this afternoon, 78 degrees. More importantly, humidity is at 40%. It is way, way down. Winds fairly calm right now. Most every thermometer into central and eastern Kentucky right now into the upper 70s. 78 Lexington, 77 popular number in the London, Somerset, Danville, Moorhead, down into southeastern Kentucky. The one lone duck that is kind of bucking the trend, that's the Frankfurt thermometer that probably needs calibrated. It's been a little off over the past couple of weeks. We look at our Defender Radar Network. Not seeing a whole lot out there across the bluegrass state. I like saying that. I haven't said that enough this summer. By the way, August right now, as of this weekend, now officially the 10th wettest August ever in Lexington. We still have a week and change to add to that. Flow across parts of the Deep South is going to eventually kick back in. That does not happen tomorrow with temperatures that will make a run toward the low 80s after we start out into the 50s with a touch of some fog. If you're out this evening, you've got the evening off. Congratulations. Nothing going on. Nothing to worry about with the weather. Sunset a little earlier and earlier now. That's the only problem for folks who like to get out and enjoy those evenings. Look at tomorrow morning. Mid and upper 50s again. A little fog for the trip into work and school tomorrow afternoon. We should hit the low 80s, mix of sun and a few high clouds into southeastern Kentucky. Nice weather overall again for our Tuesday. Now we start to mug it up a little bit as we go into Wednesday as the flow becomes from the west and the southwest. And before the day is over, you know what happens? Anytime this summer that you get an increase in humidity just a little bit, We've been able to fire up a thunderstorm or two. I think an isolated shower storm is certainly possible on Wednesday with a little better action coming down the road as we go into Thursday and Friday. Did someone stay, uh, say steam? 
I think I said that right. Muggy meter is back Wednesday and Thursday back into the tropical category by the time we hit our Thursday as the numbers really take off. The sweat factor is going to be with us. So that's why I say whatever you do, stop whatever you're going to do this evening. Get outside and enjoy it. The flow this weekend by late Friday or Thursday into Friday, especially and into the weekend, will be coming from the southwest. That will be a big blast of some hazy hot and humid weather just to our west around here. It's going to be very warm, hazy and humid as we can crank out a scattered thunderstorm or two. But again, humidity levels will be way, way up there during that time. And that means an increase in the threat for at least some scattered thunderstorms starting Wednesday. Better chance on Thursday and that'll carry us on and off into the coming weekend. No one day can I say it is likely around here. I think Thursday gives us the best opportunity until Sunday. And then once we get beyond this seven day forecast, so let's break it down a little greater detail. Once we get beyond this, Got to watch the tropics. Could be a big system impacting Florida by the time we roll into early next week. But between now and then, look at the numbers. A lot of upper 80s with a daily threat for a shower or a thunderstorm. Quick look at traffic right now. Live drive traffic. As we get up close and personal on the city of Lexington, looks like an accident uh, not too far away from Rupp into downtown. Also, we've been watching uh, Prather Road, that is between Clinton Road and Hart Road, for an accident. And Amber, that'll likely be causing at least a bit of a backup. Chris, thank you. This year's Moon Tower Music Festival is right around the corner. Deanne Stevens is out and about today at Masterson Station Park in Lexington, where they're getting ready. Hey, good afternoon, guys. What a beautiful day at Masterson Station Park here as we prepare for the third annual Moon Tower Music Festival. We got cornhole, we got dogs, we got some fabulous music we're going to tell you about here in just a bit. Kaylin Query is with us. And Kaylin, third one, yeah, third excited. one. This is a and fun bigger festival. Bigger than ever, bigger than ever. This Saturday, the 27th at Masterson Station Park, proceeds go to Central Music Academy, which is a great nonprofit here in town. Great food, great fun, even better music. Uh, lots of activities. Kids are free. It's dog friendly, so it should be a good day. Kid friendly, dog friendly, family friendly, and music friendly because really you guys good. have a rundown of some fabulous groups that will be here, one of which we're hearing from right now. Yeah, they're awesome. Vine Corn Liquor Pickers, they're amazing. We're going to listen to them for just a second. <laughs> Sit here all afternoon and listen to them. Yeah. Kelsey is with yeah. us. Not only do we have the blind corn liquor pickers who will be here this weekend, but who else is on the rundown? Um, we have three amazing headliners: Trombone Shorty from New Orleans, some jazz, Drive By Truckers, um, Manchester Orchestra. We have a couple other local bands: Small Batch, Johnny Concrete. It's going to be a really great day of music. This is really a celebration of music and being in Central Kentucky. Fun for the whole family. How do folks get tickets? Um, MoonTowerMusicFestival.com, and so you can get those for 50 bucks. Right now, and then day of, there'll be $60 at the gate. Okay, so come on out here to Masterson Station Park uh, here at the Fairground Festivals and check out all the fun to be had at the Moon Tower Music Festival coming up at 450. I promise we're going to let you hear more from these guys. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about. Back to you. Deanne, thank you. A record number of drivers are needing roadside assistance these days, many of them driving newer cars. Why new technology is a part of the problem next in Better Living. And later on WKYT News at 4.30, three people face charges after hundreds of teenagers are caught drinking at a party in southern Kentucky. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $69 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $127 million. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A report from AAA shows a record number of drivers need help on the road. The company responded to millions of calls for roadside assistance last year, many of them drivers in newer cars. Chris Martinez explains why some new automotive technologies could be to blame. Every day, Los Angeles tow truck driver Ed Rostamian comes to the rescue of dozens. 70 to 80 calls a day. His first call on this shift, a hybrid Toyota that wouldn't start because of problems with the batteries, both under the hood and in the trunk. Very common. Very common. 
AAA rescued a record 32 million drivers in 2015, commonly right. with battery or tire issues, and it's newer vehicles that are having problems. AAA says about 40% of new cars don't come with a spare tire. When Michelle Stevens got a flat on her way to work last year, she only had an inflator kit in her trunk. There was too big of a hole even to use that, so I had to call for a tow truck. AAA says newer technologies in cars are contributing to breakdowns. Keyless ignition systems in some vehicles can put a major strain on the battery. That, with all the additional electronic devices on vehicles today, will drain the battery more quickly. The life expectancy rate of a battery is only three years. And if you've had that battery for more than three years, you're living on borrowed time. On this call, Ed found his customer's battery was a goner. 100%. Back to the dealer to get a new battery. AAA says regularly checking your tire pressure and testing your battery once it reaches three years old can help ensure you face fewer problems on the road. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. A new study takes a look at the safest way to help your teenager lose weight. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends parents discourage teens from dieting, skipping meals, or using diet pills. They say teenagers whose parents encourage them to eat healthy and be physically active are less likely to have an eating disorder or engage in unhealthy diet behaviors. And a bad job can have bad effects on your health. If you hate your job in your late 20s and 30s, it's going to affect your health in your 40s. Ohio researchers tracked more than 6,000 people. They found those who are unhappy early in their careers are more depressed, worried, and have trouble sleeping later in life. Now, here's what we're working on for you coming up at 4.30.